Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first ever live recording of Creatrix Culture Podcast, now video as well. So this is so exciting. I have a really special guest with me today from England. It's Jen McCarthy, and she is a wonderful, wonderful, powerful spiritual teacher. Um, and her main focus is on the twin flame connection and the twin flame unions. And that is her main focus right now in bringing our twin flames together while we walk through these really powerful portals in this really powerful time um, on earth. And I'm really honored to be sitting with you today, Jen, and connecting with you as twin flames for me has been um, since I was really young, I've felt that there was always this, I'm, mm. I'm looking for someone like there's someone I'm supposed to meet. There's someone on my path that somewhere down the line that mm. they're, they're this thing They're I want to say like other half, but not, it always felt like something bigger. And mm. for me, I've done research on twin flames. I've met my twin flame, even though we are no, we are not in union. Um, and, and I've read like contradictory things about it, that it's, it's not even, you know, like there's so much like information that I've, I've kept myself being very broad and not a, a, like kind of um, adopting one focus and being very open to just because one person says it's not a real thing, like taking on that or, you know, so it, it, for me, my twin flame journey has been a very interesting kind of solo path of me just kind of walking in it alone, knowing that there's this other person out there, knowing that there's this connection, knowing that it's significant. Um, and I feel like until I crossed your path recently, um, I crossed your path on one of Magenta Pixie's videos back in, I think it was like April. I think the first YouTube I saw of you was with, it was you and Jen, or sorry, you're Jen. <laughs> it was you and Laura and Magenta. Um, and then I, I started kind of like looking at what you're doing and I'm like, oh, she's really doing the twin flame thing. So I, I, that's when I started diving more into what you do. And I'm like, okay, you, you've made it make a lot more sense for me. And, and as of recent sitting in your transmissions and stuff and, and activating that, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to connect with you and connect, have us connect to other people that have maybe been in similar things and paths as me um to for you to share a little bit more about that and for us to kind of dive into that so welcome <laughs> thank you so much that's amazing i look forward to your questions because it's such a vast and broad subject that it's really nice to have a sort of a, like a direction of, of what to speak about yeah so like the main thing is is um the you because you talk about that there's the um 144,000 twin flames the, and those are so when did you when did you on your path like I guess I'm going to rewind a little bit because what I'm more curious about is when did the twin flame um when did that become like your purpose on your on your spiritual journey when when your guides and spirit came to you and said this is what we need you to focus on we need you to be a teacher of that and and really be a, a, a proper speaker of this um of this mm. subject so um, when I was 16, Archie, please don't bark. Come here. Um, when I was 16 years of age, I came across a book called um, by Linda Goodman called Love Signs. And in the prologue of the of, of Linda Goodman's Love Signs, she's got this most exquisite part where she talks about and 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 then one day you come across the the other part of your soul and and when I read it when I was 16 because I was very into astrology from age 15 it, it struck a chord in me and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that that my twin soul was alive and when I was just a little girl like you know little teenager I'd be walking around and I'd be going well, we're both under the same stars we're both under the same moon like you know I know that we're both here I'm here I'm here like we are gonna we are gonna find each other we are going to reunite and so I it came into my consciousness very powerfully at a very very young age and being a Libra and I'm really really sort of like all about relationships and stuff and um and then when I got to India when I was 21 I um I met a really really significant soulmate of mine and um prior to meeting him I had 
read Shakti Gawain's book called um, Creative Visualization, where she introduces you to your masculine and feminine angelic self. And so I met my, and she says to him, just ask them their name. So I asked them their name and they said, Elijah for the feminine and Christopher for the masculine. Mm -hmm. So when I got to India, I started getting loads of like visions and downloads that I was going to meet Christopher in, in the physical form. And I knew that my soul was guiding me to this meeting. And so lo and behold, you know, everything, all my, my plans changed. And I found myself going up to high up into the Himalayas to meet this guy called Dean. And we were traveling with his brother and his cousin from England at the time. And then we got up to Chamba and um, the very, very first thing that Dean said to me was that his, his spiritual name is Christopher. And he was the person that I was having the visions of. And then within about two or three days of meeting Dean, I then had a absolutely earth shattering paradigm busting kundalini awakening by chanting the mantra om namah shivaya and i know that it was it was triggered by by dean um and so in in that that sort of like alchemy of our recognition of each other um that is what triggered me to wake up really as as, mm -hmm. as a child of god and, um, and so after my awakening, I mean, I had an extraordinarily powerful awakening. Like I, I kind of describe it as, as being overdosed with God. Like most people sign up for a, a spoon. You might sign up for a shot glass of God, but I literally signed up for the whole entire bottle. You know? <laughs> and so I, I, I went into the most exalted state of consciousness where I was just like like streaming angelic downloads about the true nature of reality and this was all affected to my kundalini this is all connected to my kundalini energy and then and experiencing very very rapturous ecstatic bl uh, bliss waves from my kundalini angelic downloads and it was just like this like concoction of bliss basically and so in this kundalini awakening i looked at dean and for the very very first time in my human life i saw the christ self in him and and it was so it was clear as day it was like looking at a child going oh that's a child it's like i could just see it clearer than day and then when i saw the christ self in him i automatically realized that it must be in me because i wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to see it in him if it wasn't in me and then the moment i realized that i realized that every single one of my brothers and sisters alive today that's ever lived that will ever live it's, it is, holds the seed of the Christ self. And our job is to, to transform from the seed of the Christ self to the fruit of the Christ self. But we all hold that blueprint of, of the Christ itself. And, um, and so because of what happened to me, I really believe that Dean was my twin flame because I thought he must be because, you know, how, how, how could that, that have been triggered? But also yeah. what happened the day after I had my awakening was that I started getting all these downloads about Yeshua and Magdalene. And, and suddenly I was like remote viewing the timeline 2000 years ago of exactly what happened between Yeshua and Magdalene. And so I'd come from a Catholic background and I, I, I didn't know none of this, you know, and, mm, and it, was all, it was all news to me. And Archie, come here. And basically I, I was shown that Magdalene was, was born as a very, very, very highly advanced spirit, spiritual initiate. And she was mm -hmm. recognized as that. Like, it's a bit like how the Dalai Lama is recognized. She was recognized mm -hmm. as a, a holder of the flame, you could say. And so this was nurtured with, within her from a very, very young age. And she was actually, she went with her family and she, she grew up in the temples of Isis. And they practiced sacred sexuality and very very deep tantric transformational practices she was trained as an initiate from a very 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 young age because it was known of her destiny and so I was shown that it was around the time about age 18 that that her and Yeshua's paths crossed and it was she was the enlightened one and she was the one that was able to recognize the Christ self in uh -huh. him which then activated his uh -huh. awakening to become the Christed being and so I was shown the whole timeline of their of their sacred relationship and I, so I was getting like I was like you know privy to all this extraordinary intel and so I was absolutely convinced that Dean was my twin in flame because I thought it didn't make sense that he that he wasn't my twin flame but he kept on saying I'm not your twin flame Jen I'm your soulmate but oh. I, I stay I stayed in that sort of like longing and, and knowing that he was my twin or feeling that he was my twin for a very very long time but after an initial coming together we split up and we never really came back together again so but I now know because Dean ended up passing over into spirit a couple of years ago 
when he returned, when he passed over, he he like knocked on my door telepathically and started giving me a channeled message. And and then he started explaining to me about soul groups and about how soul groups are configured. And he started giving me a lot of information about, about basically a soul group is comprised of 144 souls. Okay. And there are 72 masculine and 72 feminine. And they all stand opposite each other in a circle. And you stand opposite your vibrational counterpart. And he said, and then the, the, the soul that stands next to your masculine it, like so say you're a feminine and you've got your divine counterpart opposite you but the masculine that's next to your divine counterpart he's called your near twin hmm. uh, and also can be called your false twin could be called your catalyst twin there's many different names okay. for, for this contract but what he explained to me was that because the twin flame template is so um it, 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 it's so precious and it's so sacred and it's such a high vibration that it, it, it's been very rare for it to manifest on the earthly plane particularly since the fall of atlantis and so what dean explained to me was that i've been married to him way more times on the earth than i have with my true twin right. and that's why you have all these synchronicities like my whole life it was like my life was entwined in this in this relationship with dean somehow and i couldn't make sense of him not being my my twin well, yeah but he explained to me that that, that he's my near twin and and he's been my husband a lot more times than my true twin but he said to me that this is the threshold lifetime and one of the reasons why his spirit left early was um that he needed to exit the stage of this reality so that my true twin can enter because I get too lost in him and and that connection and he said to me it's so it's so pivotal that you that you come into union with your twin in this lifetime that that was part of the the contract of not the whole contract of why he left early that was part of the contract mm -hmm. uh, and that was news to me I was like what oh my god that that's a big thing but this was all explained to me in, in in a channeled message from him and as I was receiving this message this was all new information that I didn't know anything about consciously and I was getting all of the signs like like crying goosebumps like shaking like the works it was like a real real strong um download that I was getting from him so it's, it's, it's a long story like that, that question is such a you know I've got so much yeah. to share about yeah. that whole thing do you know what I mean that's really beautiful though I mean just you even and because I I feel like in this lifetime um some people that have came across my path very strong connections right and I've had that where I was like I thought another person was my I was convinced they were my twin yeah. And then life has gone on and I'm like, wait, no, they're not. But the, the connection was so strong as if they were right. Yeah. And then now it's like, oh, no, 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 no. When I finally came to this other person, I was like, oh, it's you. But right. what's up with that? You know, like, so you just kind of like, thank you for that, because you just cleared some stuff up for me of like, yeah, having the people around you and, and that they're, you know, they're different aspects, but they're not that one. Yeah. person because i've been really confused by that for a while with a few, with with a few different people along my path yeah. um i i felt like that obviously definitely soulmate but then it's like you know there, there's just different levels and different vibrations with people and and there's the ones that you come across and it, it's so energetic um yeah. but it never felt like fully it like i was still yeah. like I'm waiting for somebody else. I'm looking for someone else. I meant to go find somebody else. I, I, I don't know where they are, but maybe, I don't know, you know? So yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. That, that explains like a lot, like a lot of stuff. I'm gonna have to sit with that one yeah. even more and just really digest it and allow it to, you know, kind of go into my body and, and, and place some things that I've been carrying. Yeah. Also, it kind of because I'm writing my book at the moment. And, yeah, um, I'm so excited about that. Talks, it, I get inspired to write a chapter. I'll write, I'll devote a chapter to talking about the Catalyst Twin and what what I was shown about the Catalyst Twin. I think it's going to be a really like a deal breaker. I think it's going to help put so many dots together. Absolutely, so people, yeah. To explain that, yeah. Because my other one, I really got that. Like Spirit told me, like, no, you had to meet him and have that like kind of initial activation feeling. So when you came across the path with the other one, you guys could go even higher in a sense and you would know it even better. And he was like the catalyst and it wasn't even in that terminology for me, but that was, I was kind of shown, you know, but I didn't yeah, really I mean, 
Yeah. I didn't know that that was a, an actual like real thing. So it, I don't know. It's so cool. It all just like, makes so much sense now. I love the, way, it. the way it was explained to me or the way that I, I sort of like was shown is that the garden of one's heart has been very frozen what with being born in this matrix whereby there's all this very dark and false programming that has been imposed upon the children of God. And so because of that, it's like if you can visualize a garden, like a frozen garden, like the first frost has come, the soil is like really, really hard. You can't mm -hmm. plant a seed in that soil. Mm -hmm. And so the role of the catalyst twin is to come in there and start cleaning up the garden of your heart. And it's to start breaking it down, digging, pulling out the weeds, purging, helping you purge, helping you basically prepare your heart for the true love, for, for the, the seeds of true love that your true twin will plant. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the best analogy to explain what I've been shown about the role. So the role of the catalyst twin is just as important as the twin really, because the catalyst prepares you. You like you can't meet your twin. If you've got like a completely frozen over heart, you're not even gonna recognize your twin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not. You have to do that work where you have to have heartbreak, you have to grow, you have to, you know, you have to learn all these lessons in order to open and become malleable and vulnerable and soft to 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 experience true love. Right. And the full unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we've been so programmed when it comes to relationships and love and and unions with each other. And it's it's so heavy, like just stepping back and, and, and watching other people in relationships now that I've gone further and, and in a different, in a different kind of um, dimension. So I'm kind of like looking down on things and, and then watching things play out. And um, there, there's just so much misguidance and misunderstanding in, in, in the true relationship and partnership and true, true, true love. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, so why is it in this lifetime? And like, obviously we know what, you know, and this is for like people listening that don't know, might, might not know a lot that's going on right now, but going into these different uh, portals and gateways um, that were coming up to the 1212 and the 1221 and going into the age of Aquarius and going into this ascension. Um, Beyond this, so it is is the role of the twin flame going to be as important, or is this union of these souls that have come here to really uh, like activate these these timelines, activate these these light codes, activate everything? Are, is there going to be like I'm guessing what I'm trying to get at is like beyond this, is the role of the twin flames going to be as like imperative as it is now, or is this, these unions coming together just really so important for this, this push into the next level? So what I've been shown is that whether you connect with your true twin on a 5D level or a lower dimensional level, like the, on the earthly plane, wherever it is that you make that, that link, that umbilical link with your true, true twin, um, when that happens, it's like you experience a homecoming, like mm -hmm. your soul experiences like a, a, a true and genuine homecoming. And so when, when you experience that, you have no lack, like there's nothing in you that is lacking. There's nothing in you that is longing. There is nothing in you that is seeking or searching. You have arrived home at the zero point field of consciousness mm -hmm. where you, you are aware that all timelines are operating concurrently. You're a creator being. If you want to create anything, you just use your imagination, your intention, your visualization, and you just, you, you, you draw it into your reality. You're, you're very, very highly empowered. So when one reaches that vibration, say you're not in a physical relationship with your twin, that is, that is like the Trump vibration. I mean, it's up there with the Trump vibration, but what even trumps that vibration is when you are both zero pointed with your twin. Like, so that's very powerful for one, one twin to be zero pointed. That's like sending out codes and frequencies to, to the collective that are literally holding it up into 5D. 
Mm-hmm. That, that's what we're doing. Our job is to vibrationally hold this planet in, in the fifth dimensional frequency band. And that is the role of the twin. So one person that is truly, truly awakened is, is doing that is doing that but for me like I'm not in union with my twin yet but as me and my twin come into physical union with each other it's, it's even going to be like way more powerful than just me being in the zero point doing it the fact that we're physically united is going to activate so much bliss within our DNA so much uh, bliss within our cellular memories that 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 frequency of bliss is literally what's going to lift the planet and, and keep the planet stabilized in 5d mm-hmm. so twins have a very very essential role not only in this like threshold period ascension period but but also like after the ascension and during the ascension because it's our vibration that's holding the that's planet. keeping it up yeah yeah and essentially and these vibrations helping the ones who are very sleeping or or not even close to awakening is it that will be kind of trickling down to them and activating them too to start yeah so this is start going to a soul group so what i was shown when i had my um when i experienced my twin flame ascension in in 2013 Mm -hmm. i was um i was shown that like we all have a monadic soul group that is comprised of 144 souls 72 masculine and 72 feminine. When one person in that soul group wakes up, truly, truly awakens to God consciousness, then the whole vibration of the entire soul group is elevated. And if one person in the soul group makes a genuine bona fide connection with their true twin flame, this then up levels the whole entire soul group to not be able to settle for lesser relationships. Yeah. It's like it, it's like a bar is set. Mm-hmm. So, um, and this this was really interesting. Like you know, because I channel, and so I, I channel from like spirits and stuff like that. So this is information that I received um, at the time of my ascension, and it actually came came through from my twin's partner at the time. She she wrote to me on a telepathic five D level, and she explained to me that 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 you know it wasn't our time for, for us to come into physical union, but she was looking after him for me. She was preparing him for me, and she she explained. She said we're all part from this, of the same soul group, and there's absolutely no way I can stay in this relationship with him now because he's been he's been not targeted but he's been sort of like like called out by his true true twin and so she she just explained to me that that just elevates the whole entire soul group to to raise their consciousness and and, and align with their true twin so i imagine if, if it affects your your soul group it's going to affect mm-hmm. the collective as well yeah absolutely that's beautiful. And you were just saying, cause I, I, um, you were just talking about how, did you find yourself through life when you were really young, like not being able to waste your time on just like having a partner or not having something or connecting with people to like, uh, to that, that isn't of a higher vibration. Because for me, I have spent most of my life kind of wandering this earth alone and people would be like why don't you have a boyfriend why like this or that and I, I was just like if it's not a, a a higher vibration it's not a super connection it's a waste of my time I would rather just be alone I'm fine alone like I, I have a great time you know um but I just never really wasted my time on having relationships just to have relationships it just didn't feel right so I was wondering if you experienced similar things like that growing up having mm-hmm. that calling in you that there's someone else yeah definitely but I think you know it's always important to remember that you know that we we carve out our path at the feet of mother father god prior to our incarnation and we specifically choose circumstances and relationships mm-hmm. that are going to serve our greatest soul's evolution uh-huh. so whatever it is that we experience that is something that we signed up for so if that's what you signed up for. You, you made an agreement, and and all the souls that you you're contracted with, they were like, we're gonna we're gonna like hang back now because she she she's chosen this path to to walk this path alone uh, for this particular time period, and that's mm-hmm. gonna help her really really stabilize in in her self mastery, which is a fundamental prerequisite for a true twin relationship. But like the divine feminine has to be truly awakened. If the divine feminine isn't truly awakened, then it can cause quite a lot of confusion and distortion in the relationship 
it, you know, so so it, it, it could be that you you know you signed up for this path of like being solo in order for you to fully fully you know come into your self mastery, and then mm-hmm. as soon as you've done that, then boom, you're you're just going to unite with your twin. So I think it's more of an individual thing that that mm-hmm. but, but the higher vibrational souls are more likely to choose long periods of of independence, definitely. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what was I also going to ask you? Because I know I read somebody wrote on one of your forums somewhere about they were asking you is what if the twins don't find themselves in union during their, this whole lifetime of theirs? Um, it, That's a difficult question because it's a what if question. It yeah. doesn't really work like that. Like each, that, that you, you've either soul contracted to come into physical union with your twin or you haven't. Whatever yeah. decision that you made sat at the feet of mother, father, God, that is going to be your, your destiny. And, I don't know why that's your choice. I can only take responsibility for my soul choice. And I I chose to have many, many years walking a solo path. And I've also chosen the path of the highest divine relationship you can possibly have. So it, it, it's, I, I don't think you can, you can go into the realms of what if that, yeah. that, that does, that's not the language of spirit, you know? Right. How does free will play into, into all of it then with the twins? If, if, you if you did let's say we we did sign this contract but we do have free will you know and and it's one... like, do we have free will though i i don't know we do have free will when we get to a certain level like because i i don't have my i don't have free will i just have god's will yeah and my will is one with god's will yeah so I've been... i don't i don't have an independent free will like i just want what's best for everyone yeah thank you i like that because mm-hmm. i've been i've been as I've been walking my spiritual path, um, really a lot deeper and, and, and learning so much more, I, I've, I've been wondering that it was like, okay, cause everyone, you know, they'll say like, well, then there's free will. Well, yeah. How much at one point, how much, when does free will ha- still have? Cause my, my, I'm with you. Like my life has changed where it's like, I'm of service now. I'm, I'm, it's not about me anymore. It's about being of service to, to God and to everything else and to what I came here to do and my mission and my purpose on this planet. And it's no longer about me and, and, and this life I was trying to, you know, make happen before. So I, I've really been pondering that, that, that aspect because a lot of people are like, well, don't forget, there's always free will. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, what point does... I mean, I'd like to say something about that. I mean, what I've been shown is that, you know, there is free will if you're if you're in ignorance, if you're spiritually asleep, there is still the, the, the sort of tentative idea of free will. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that all souls are glorious and grand to levels that we cannot comprehend. Even if you're the most asleep person in the world, you could be like a blooming Orion overlord. You could, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. On, on a soul level, we're all huge, humongous galactic beings. And, um, but, but anyway, if you've chosen to stay asleep and not wake up, awaken to your true divinity in this lifetime, then I think that you, 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 you have the chance to play around with the idea of, free will however when you awaken and Mm -hmm. your consciousness like it's like the best way to describe awakening for me is that the ego self perceives itself to be a separate drop of water it it feels isolated it feels alone it feels abandoned and it, it feels separate from the ocean and in that moment where we wake up it's like it's like at the death of the ego identity. So, so the ego identity, that singular drop of water returns back to the whole entire ocean. So you lose your individual identity, but you become one with the ocean. And you realize, holy macaroni, I'm, I'm like one with the ocean. Mm-hmm. And so are you, and so are you, and so are you, and so are you, you just don't realize it. So I believe that when you get to that point in your spiritual evolution, where your egoic identity in effect dies then you have no more free will there's no more free will there's just god's will Mm -hmm. and i I feel like i've been operating in that vibration for a really really long time so i wouldn't even know what free will is 
Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I think that's going to help a, a lot of people listening to. I think that's going to really help them understand. Just, I can just share my experience. Like nothing. I've never learned anything. This is just literally just my experience of what I've learned and what mm-hmm. I've shown. And I'm not saying it's the universal truth. It, it, it's just my experience. And if that can help you and if that can give you an aha moment, that's great. But mm-hmm. only ever accept what resonates and just always just disregard the rest and we're all the oracle like that's mm-hmm. what I realized when I had my spiritual awakening when I was 21 I was like oh my god my heart is the sacred scripture because I was getting all these like downloads about about the holiness of life and everything and I was like I was like holy Jesus my heart is the living scripture but it's mm-hmm. not, I'm not, my, not only my heart it's like the heart the, the human heart is the is the you know the holy scriptures but you just have to listen to your heart and that's mm-hmm. why the word heart has the word ear in it because you have to listen to your heart because your heart speaks the truth and your heart knows about the truth of, of, of about your divinity about true love about your purpose about your destiny because ultimately your heart is like your gps to to take you to your destiny so mm-hmm. you have to listen with your ears to your heart because your heart will tell you who your true love is. Your, your heart will tell you where you're, what location you're meant to be in. Your heart is the way that your God self communicates to you. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's what I've learned. Yeah, and your heart is where like, yeah, it's like you, we're, we're our own teachers. We're our own healers. Yeah. We're, we're our own God, you know, like we are yeah. God within us. Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it's, it is quieting down and, and, and going inward. And, and that's, what's hard you know especially these times when we live in right now is like every i just feel like everything's so loud out there you know and like especially with all these wi-fi waves and and all this technology now and and every a lot of stuff so designed to keep us distracted and keep us like for me sometimes i'll sit in meditation and because i live in the middle of los angeles and i'm like why is it, you know, it'll be quiet, but I'm like, why is it just so loud? You know? And then I realized one day I'm like, oh, it's all these frequencies in the air. It's all this stuff. And so I have to take an extra minute to, to allow myself to go deeper, to really, to really tune in. And I think it is really important to, you know, a lot, a lot of people I talk to, they're like, well, how do I meditate? I'm like, how do you know, they're or like, I'm scared or something, whatever the thing is. I'm like, just sit and get quiet for a minute. It's, you don't have to make it some big thing. It's just sit and tune into yourself. Um, cause the more we go back to, to ourselves and that teaching, you know, I feel like we're just, we're pu- we've been pulled so far away from it, from ourselves, from the land, from, from everything, you know? So, yeah, Maybe. yeah, we, we're, we're just taught to lead so much with our heads, you know, and, um, yeah, yeah. time to lead with heart again and go back to that and remember that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really beautiful. So you have a few um, events coming up. That's really mm-hmm. exciting. You're doing a transmission on 1212. Do you want to talk a little bit of what you're doing sure. with that? I'm going to put all of your information in uh, the podcast notes. And also I'm going to put this on YouTube and I'll put your links to stuff so people can connect you send it with to you. Me, I can also YouTube. upload it onto my YouTube as well. Okay. I'll um, definitely do that. So basically the 1212 transmission will be on the 12th of December and we're going to be working with um, your spiritual mastery. So assisting you. So the intention for the transmission is everyone that shows up to really, really step into their full spiritual mastery. And um, so we're going to be working with with the 12th dimensional avatar self. This is very, very powerful to connect with our 12D self. And we're going to um, just allow those codes to infiltrate our, our, our earthly vessels. And um, we're also going to be working with the with the 12 strand DNA restructuring. And so a lot of my work is specifically connected to the DNA and, um, and, and the transformation from the two strand scrambled DNA, which happened at the, t- at the fall of Atlantis and, mm-hmm. um, and to assist, you know, in, in that restructuring of the 12 strand DNA into the diamond formation. So we're going to be working a lot with that intention of really, really um, fixing our DNA back into this diamond 12 strand structure. So it's very, very, very powerful, very, very life changing. And um, 
the, the way that we work, we work on, on the imagination visualization level and we work in a very, very large group. And so we're all holding space for each other's transformation and we're all really massively supporting each other's transformation. That's why people have such powerful experiences in the transmissions. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to ha come and have like a very, very powerful experience, come, come and be part of the transmission. And, um, and then I've got my uh, one day retreat on the uh, 21st. 21st. Mm -hmm. It's a six hour retreat and we're gonna have lots of yoga, mantra, uh, and um, we're gonna be working a lot with the age regeneration codes because the aging program is a false dark program, archonic program that, um, you know, it, it's not who we are. We're children of God. We're meant to be in these vessels for however long we want. And so we're, we're, we're gonna be really, really working with completely removing the aging program and um, activating that age regeneration process within us. Um, I've got special guests coming in on the day. I've got Magenta Pixie, Laura Eisenhower, Charlie Freak. They're going to be doing guest appearances for Q&A and um, just sharing about the energies of the day. And um, and then I've got my my book coming out Your on book. the 14th of yeah. February. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I'm so excited for that one. I'm hardly waiting. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. Be so yeah, I mean, I have to say I took your I did the uh 1111 transmission and I just did the recent one, the Atlantis. um Atlantis. Was that on a special day? I'm like trying to think now. I'm like, was that on a special day or did you just it do was that? 2211. That's what it was. I'm like, yeah. I knew it was something and I'm like <laughs> It was. It was 2211. Yeah, and they were both like so powerful, so powerful. Um I'm going to sit down and do them again cuz you said to like, you know, go back and so I've let both of them integrate now and I'm gonna, cause I feel like every time you do something like, especially like that is such a, a powerful transmission is, is, you know, you go deeper, you get the first yeah. thing and then, and then you, you know, it's like watching a movie or reading a book for the first time. And then if you, you know, do it again, it's like, oh, I didn't see that before. I didn't get that, you know, cause you're taking in the initial thing. Like, I don't know what this is. And you're like blindly going in and out. Okay. I got the base. Now let's go deeper. So I'm excited to uh, to go back on there and and take those again and, and join you in the 1212 and the 1221 because yeah they're there's they're... a massive opportunity for you to accelerate your evolutionary process so you can come and do the transmissions and then you can evolve so so fast but if you were just to do it on your own you'd get there but it would just take a lot longer yeah it's a fast track evolutionary process and the work is specifically intended to align you with your higher self like as quickly as possible and without a shadow of a doubt like that is the feedback i get people like that's why i get such amazing feedback because people become themselves and they're like I, I finally feel like i'm becoming my true self and i just feel relaxed and i just feel at peace and i just feel like i want to serve i just want to help everyone i feel yeah. so amazing and that is the the sort of like the feedback i get almost invariably like people come home to their self you know and it's nothing to do with the teacher i'm just like I'm just like a tuning fork that yeah. is sort of like going off at a certain frequency. And then if you're open, then you can also then tune into that frequency, but it's your heart frequency. I, I'm just like, I'm just really, really transparent with my, uh, with my heart, you know, as a heart being, I'm really, mm -hmm. really transparent. I'm kind of like flipped inside out really. Yeah. 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 Um, what was I going to say about that? I just lost it. Hmm. Um, what was it regarding? Was it regarding being flipped out or? Oh, it was about um, the fast track to transmission. Oh, yeah. And I feel like um, for me, since this whole <laughs> pandemic started um, and, and actually even going into the beginning of this uh, of 2020, my guides were like, OK, girl, like, you know, like it, you're you're done. You're done. Like you got, we got to get you going here. Like we've let you like kind of just wander around doing your own thing for a while. Like we, we're, we got to speed it up. And, um, I, I tell people like, I was very much, a, when I was born, very aware, very awake, but also, you know, my path led me down different things because of being raised Catholic and, and that not an excuse, just trying to like balance, like, this is what my family's taught me, but this is what my guides are telling me, but I didn't even know they were my guides when I was little, you know, and, and I'm trying to navigate, you know, this world. And, and when I was young, you know, we didn't, I was born 1980. So we didn't have 
like internet to look things up or to find teachers or to find someone with like answers. So you're just kind of like going around this world. Um, and so I, I went down a lot of different pathways. And then finally, when it came to this year, my guides were like, we're not, we gotta, we gotta fast track you. Like you, we gotta like give you like, we've been trying to tell you to like, Hey, come on over here. And you're just like, no, but I will in a minute. Just want to, you know, I'm going to go over here for a minute. And so I feel like there's a, there's a shaman that I work with and she, she's even told me over the past few months, like, especially since the pandemic started, I've just went into a deep dive into aligning and, 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 um, connecting and, studying and and you know then my path has led me to people like you and magenta and everyone and the work that everyone's doing and and my comprehension of stuff is like yep got it yep got it like it's been there the whole time but i was you know fluttering off in other places and um so i've been definitely fast tracked in in a in a heightened fast 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 awakening process but your transmissions have also like i'm like i oh I see why I'm here. Like, I see why spirit led me here to jump in with you on this day. And cause they're like, we got to go, we got to go. Like there's no time to waste anymore. So it's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing your work and stepping into, you know, and being of service and, and, and doing and not, you know, refusing the call and, you know, um, just being such a beacon for people to, to, continue to awaken and to continue to, you know, get onto their path if they've wavered or fallen off, or they're just starting to, you know, climb on because it is so important. And it's, I think I'm really honored to be alive at this time and going through this and, 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 and being on the path that I'm on and being of service the way I can, it's, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful now to, to connect with, um, all of my soul tribes, you know, and people and, and be bringing this energy and these activations and this light together to raise. Cause I'm like feeling really emotional right now. <laughs> Cause like, it's, it just, it, it, you know, like, uh, like as you awaken, you just like, you know, like it just, it makes me really sad of like how, whew, like how wrong it's been for people and people have been suffering and we haven't yeah. had to. And yeah. You know, it's like, like when the veil lifts off and you look back and you're like, wow, like I was so given the wrong information. Like, mm. and even though my higher self is like, no, it's wrong, you know, but my human self is, you know, trying to just mm. taking on so much. And um, it, it's like now when you come to this other side, you're like, everyone, come on. That was so much better over here, you know, like, please. Please, please, please come because this is not, you know, we've, we've just been fed so many lies and it's so sad and it's just, it just it really breaks my heart because I've just been, I was a cheerleader of, of before I even knew a lot of just like, no, go for your highest potential, go for your dreams. Like that was me as a person, you know, and I didn't even know really what I was standing up for, but I was standing up for something like, no, like, fuck the man, like, come on. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know what I was, you know, who, who I was like doing that to. And now I'm like, oh, I fully get it. And we can more be more and we can have more. And, you know, it's, I, I'm just so excited to, as we move on to see all of our potentials and our limitless potentials and see where we can go as a collective and as individuals and, and, uh, and like just how much higher we can go together and, and really being living life is, yeah, a timeless life or a life we choose that we, you know, the aging and process and stuff that we, it can be different. And, and there are other things for us. And we've just been fed so much to not, to, to come into this experience and not be an expand the biggest and brightest that we can. And it, what I think what hurts my heart the most is you see so many people on the street and maybe friends and, and just people around and, and they're so, you can just see the weight on them and you can just see, you know, that they deep down, I feel they want, and they know like a little glimmer that there's something more, they want something better, but they've just given up, you know, and they just don't think that there's hope for them. And, that really breaks my heart. So I honor you for sitting with me today and 
um, speaking and, and just being a public figure, even though you've had a little, uh, you've had some, some backlash recently. And um, I commend you for standing back up and brushing off and keep going and, you know, not letting them block what you're doing because, you know, there's a reason why we all signed up for this right now. And um, your messages are really powerful. And I just want to thank you for that. And thank, thank you, you for sharing your time with us today. And You're welcome. And yeah, just to everyone to share this video. Let's let's get this video out to as many brothers and sisters as possible because there are so many codes in this video that will help many people to have aha moments. And there's loads and loads of dots that can potentially be put together. So just see it as an act of generosity and kindness to actually to share this video. That's what I recommend. Yeah. Yeah. And follow Jen and support Jen. And like I said, all of her links will well uh will be in my the... links. yeah well yeah, i just i'll my book yeah definitely will be supporting your book and yeah. i would love for you to come back once it's out and promote yeah. it some more if you would like and and, yeah. and meet you on the other side of the uh <laughs> other side of these gateways and portals and um i think that would be really special to connect again if, if um if we can find a time later around your book launching to do that, I think that would be really nice. Would you like to hear a little excerpt from my book? Absolutely. Why don't you share that before we go? Okay. A little fun teaser. <laughs> let me find a good bit. Um, well, it's all good, but let me just find. When you arrive home in the zero point field of consciousness, you realize that this is the gateway point to the fifth dimension. And prior to entering into the zero point, you realize that your consciousness was previously hovering around the third dimensional realm and the fourth dimensional realm. Once you truly arrive home within the present moment of now, this is when you arrive in the heart space, which is the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is the place of unity consciousness. It is the place where sacred union is the order of the day. It is the dimensional reality where all that exists is the divine and sacred marriage of you and your divine beloved, you and your own eternal kundalini energy, you and your relationship with your eternal self and you and your eternal and perpetual relationship with God. This is all that exists within the zero point field. This is the place where all polarity and all duality ends. We still see the dance of polarity and duality within the fourth dimensional realms of consciousness. And it is only when we get to the fifth dimension that we truly transcend this entire dance of polarity and duality and we arrive home into the zero point field of divine sacred union, union with self, union with your beloved and union with God. At this conjecture, it would be appropriate to share with you that I've been shown that in the fifth dimensional realms of consciousness, the masculine and feminine polarities of the twin flame still have a form, a higher dimensional crystalline form. And so the dance of the polarity still takes place on some level. However, the notion of duality and separation has been entirely transcended on all levels of consciousness when one arrives home to the zero point field, fifth dimensional consciousness. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it. You can just rifle it off whenever I write something and I'm like, can I read it to you? And then I'm always like, Burr. <laughs> you got that down. That's yeah. so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's, it's, just, it's just gold. It's just packed. Like every sentence is gold. And it's all just like packed on top of each yeah. other. And it's, it's really explaining because it's like, it's taking like these really kind of like mystical concepts, like Kundalini energy, fifth dimension, zero mm -hmm. point field, God consciousness, Christ consciousness. They, they've all, these, this language has sort of like been, been kind of like held by mystics, you know, but it, it shouldn't be like that. This is, this is for all of us. Like we're all divine beings. We all must have access to that, to that knowledge and that consciousness. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the book is sort of like, um, you know, bringing bringing this these words and 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 concepts and truths out out of the mystical realms and just and bringing them to to, to the on the day to day level to share with everyone. Yeah, very powerful. It's very powerful because yeah, there's a lot of lost teachings and a lot of kept teachings and you know a lot of then the teachings being manipulated and then you know given out like no you know the misinformation about like to to then like protect the teachings so. I think it's beautiful that, you know, this, this book is just really, it, it, it sounds like since I've heard you like be writing about it, it's, it's just flowing out of you. So it's, it, it sounds like you're just like, that's what I've been imagining. It's like, I've, you know, I've written this many words today. And I'm like, dang, that girl, she's really like, I just imagined you being like this, like, <laughs> 
I've, I've written 31,000 words in since since um, November the 11th. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations on that, because there are no blocks for you with this information coming out. And that's, no. that's just gorgeous. And that's yeah. the thing with what happened with my um, my FB and, and my Insta and what it just inspired me to write the book. I was like, you, you're not going to shut me up. In fact, I'm going to create something. I'm going to create an everlasting legacy. Thank you very much. Instead of these um, instant memes that, that I used to create and they used to go viral. But it's just right. instant and it's gone. I'm actually going to create something of a lasting legacy mm -hmm. that people can hold in their hands that they can refer back to that's going to be a source of profound comfort for so many people and it's yeah. going to trigger so many awakenings like i probably i wouldn't be surprised if i break the record for triggering the, the amount of awakenings literally this book is encoded with such powerful information it really really is and they can't yeah they can't take that away from you you know they or us or anything no. yeah and it's yeah. not, I'm not really going to, I'm not going to promote it in a 3D way. I'm just going to tell everyone to share it by word of mouth. Yeah. And so, and they can't, they can't control that. I mean, the thing is, it's like, if we look throughout, you know, centuries and centuries and centuries, like whenever they try to keep someone down or not spoken or whatever that we always find a different way. It's like criminals, you know, if they're going to break in the house, they're going to find a way in. You can lock all the doors. It's like, if, you know, we're, take down the FB, take down the Insta, do whatever. There's always another way where we're, you know, we're uh, innovative beings and what's meant to be shared and what's meant to be heard is definitely going to be out there. And, you know, and they, I always say to people, if, if, you know, someone's speaking good things and they're sending light and love and there's someone, you know, of what they've proposed themselves to be higher and saying like, oh, you know, like they're this, they're that, or we got to take that away. Those are the things you should be paying attention to because those are, you know, that that's where the truth is. That's where the gold is that, you know, they've, they've been trying to shut people up for way too long that actually, you know, and then it'll be like a hundred years later, like, oh, that one teacher, they weren't crazy. They were saying the right thing. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, so they can, Sorry. they can take down your 3d stuff, but they're not taking you down, you know? No way, not at all. But um, so as we just wrap it up, can you tag me in this video and then it will go out onto my community? Yes. And um, and then send when you can and whenever you want, just send me the recording and I'll upload it and I'll put links to your all your stuff if you want to send it to me. Yes. On my YouTube. And uh, yeah, and and yes, yeah, share, please share this video. Whoever's watching. Yes. Share, 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 please. Yes. And I will, I will do that. I'll actually send it to you in a few hours. I'm going to yeah, hop up here and, and do all my techie things that I do and, and I'll get it over to you. So thank you so much for sitting with me today and, and everyone else who's watching and um, yeah, lots of love and going through the holidays and going through the, the, um, the gateways here and, and we'll see you in the transmissions and at the retreat and Thank you. Blessings and have a good day. Bye guys. Many blessings. Bye.